Thanks so much for tuning in to KEXP, where the music matters at 90.3 FM in Seattle. We're streaming at KEXP.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, live in the KEXP studios with Frankie Cosmos. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. It is so great to see you and so exciting to hear that you've got a new album, Vessel. And you're going to play some songs from that today? Yeah. We're streaming live on KEXP's Facebook page now if you want to watch along as well. It's Frankie Cosmos live on KEXP. All right, here we go. Frankie Cosmos live on KEXP. All right, uh, here we go to the next one. Oh, you know I'm fried. Oh, you know I'm fried. I
So nice. We're live in the KEXP studios with Frankie Cosmos, a new album out on Sub Pop Records called Vessel. Again, it is so great to have you back in the studio. These new songs sound wonderful. Thank you. You want to give a little band introduction? Yeah, we've got Alex Bailey on the bass, Luke Pineson on the drums, Lauren Martin on keys. I'm Greta. And you record with a band now. I know you made music by yourself for a very long time. And how do these songs come together specifically for this record? I imagine that you write them. Do you flesh them out with the band in the studio? Um, we actually uh, spend like a lot of time before we go into the studio just arranging them together. So like, I'll come in with demos uh, or send the demos in advance. And then we spent like a year maybe working on just how we were going to play them live and what kind of stuff we were going to put on the album. And then when we go to record, we just, you know, spit them all out in a, in a couple of days. <laughs> Do you find yourself working over some of the songs over and over? Because I know that at least one or two songs on the record uh, were released sort of in their demo form. And I'm wondering how you decide and how much time you spend on the songs. Yeah. Uh, well, with those songs, it was a lot of um, people, like, would shout them out at shows. And so... Uh, we decided to make, you know, to recreate them as band songs. Uh, but yeah, there's only a couple things. There's only a few songs where sometimes we change our mind about the direction it's going and do something different. But we all pretty much just, I don't know. We don't we don't argue too much about sort of yeah. what it's going to end up sounding like. I just kind of I trust everyone to make their own part and make it uh, fit the song. Everyone's listening, you know. <laughs> Well, you mentioned that the songs grow, and I know you've written so many songs and you perform them night after night. You've toured for many years, and you've grown as a person, and your relationships evolve, what's going on in your life evolves, but you do write about what's going on in your life. So how do you keep those songs fresh? As you say, people shout out, they want to hear the old ones as well as the new ones, yeah. and you probably have to get in a certain mindset to sing those songs over and over as your life changes. Yeah, once in a while it can be uh, difficult to get into the right mindset for a for a song that's that I maybe don't particularly uh, relate to. But I also I feel like I kind of find new ways to relate to them over time. Like if a song is really old, it almost starts to feel like I'm covering someone else's song, but it I can find my own you know connection to it. That's more current, I guess. I've heard you talk in interviews about how you write a song and then when you're really in it and writing about something going on in your life and then you sing it later, you kind of actually understand it better yeah. um, than when you were writing it. How often does that happen? All the time. I really feel like with this album particularly that I learned a lot about what the album meant after we were finished with it, after we came back to it and when, once we, we just started touring with it. So now I'm having a totally different sort of reaction to a lot of the meanings. <laughs> you started writing and releasing music on Bandcamp when you were quite young, just a teenager. I know it started um, maybe as kind of a hobby, certainly a, a, a solitary endeavor. And you have now garnered so many fans. You toured extensively. And I've read in interviews where you talk about how grateful for the opportunities that you've created for yourself, but you're not sure that maybe your constitution is made for being a touring or even a performing musician. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you don't want to stop making music. That's very clear. Yeah, I really like writing. All of I think all of us can agree that our favorite part is arranging songs. Like that's the most fun day is like when there's a new song and we get to all think about what we want to do and like work over it like like scientists in a lab a little bit and just talk about it and and then get to play it for the first time but it it definitely is uh that's you know you can't just do that I guess <laughs> um I don't know yeah I think performing is really scary I personally am scared uh <laughs> I don't know you guys any I, thoughts about this? I have stage fright. Yeah, we get stage fright. We it's mentally draining, preparing yourself to be in front of a large crowd. Yeah, I mean, I'm scared it's right also, now. <laughs> it's also exhilarating. It's fun. I don't know. Yeah, it's fun and scary. It's, I just keep being like, okay, today I'm going to try and do it. You know, it's like each day yeah. I'm just like, I'm willing to try this thing that's scary to me. And that's kind of how I started playing shows at all. It was just like, oh, I could try this thing that's scary to me and see what happens um but 
Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing it. It's weird. <laughs> we like it. We like, you know, we like playing. Yeah. It's like, sometimes. it's a balance. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's really, really scary and draining. And sometimes it's like, that was so worth it and beautiful. And, you know. Yeah. Well, your songs really connect <laughs> with your audience. And I know that over the years, fans have come up to you and shared what the songs mean to you. And of course, they're only a part of you. <laughs> they think that they know you so well. But I imagine at times that can really be energizing. And then that can also be draining, especially when you're driving from show to show. And I, I, hopefully, you're not still selling merch. I know you used to be this a, is our first a tour. one-woman show. <laughs> yeah, this is our first tour where our friend, we have a friend selling merch. So that has been really a lifesaver, I would say. <laughs> it's like we were just talking to uh, Nick from Sub Pop. We we're gonna have dinner with later, and he was like, "Are you? Can you? Do you have time to have dinner?" And I was like, "Yes, we can have dinner. Can it's have so dinner exciting to me. I get time. to eat dinner." So that's uh, been really nice. And hopefully, <laughs> also get a little bit of sleep. Yeah, a lot of sleep if possible. Last night I got a lot of sleep, maybe too much. <laughs> A lot of this discussion talks about how much you enjoy writing, and I've heard you say multiple times in interviews that you want to write as many songs as you can in your lifetime. Tell me what that means to you, what, what inspires you about that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think performing also can, you know, you can develop this, like, really intense connection with the audience, and it can be, like, this really wonderful energy exchange, which I also think is valuable. But often when I'm on tour and I'm, like, deep into performing every night and I haven't gotten to write anything, I start to feel like this is not what I want to contribute. Like what I really want to do is have a, a million songs, <laughs> which, uh, so I think I probably said that in a moment of that when I was not necessarily, uh, when I was like missing writing songs, but um, I think you can do both. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you have about half a million songs, <laughs> which is great. Um, you also have uh, another side project. I don't know if that's going to be an ongoing thing, but can you talk a little bit about Lexi? Alex? Well, this is yeah. Alex of Lexi. Um, yeah. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> We're, you know, it's just, it's just sort of another place to put energy. It's a, uh, I, I would say it's more your project. So take a little pressure off you to have <laughs> Alex uh, out in the front on that? Well, yeah. Uh, there was a time before I was in Frankie Cosmos, and so that was how we collaborated. And now I'm in it, so Lexi's kind of taking a break for at least a couple months, but yeah. Yeah, Lexi is sort of like when, when Frankie Cosmos is chilling and we're, we're not touring, it's like another, you know, way to, to we all have our Low pressure stuff that we do. project, yeah. It's kind of like, uh, like Luke and Lauren have hobbies, and <laughs> that are outside of music. And I'm like, what are my hobbies? And so for me, I just had to like, I have to do a different music project as a yeah. hobby. There you go. <laughs> I like board games uh, <laughs> and Lexi. <laughs> Well, it's great to get a little peek inside of what goes on in Frankie Cosmos and Lexi, and it is always wonderful to have you here in the studio. The new album is called Vessel, Frankie Cosmos playing tonight at Numos here in Seattle. And are you just starting off on this tour? Uh, no, we're almost done actually with this, oh. this leg, but then we're going to do an East Coast uh, tour and then go to Europe. So. All right, yeah. so you're going to be spending a bit of time together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for spending time with us here in studio. Frankie Cosmos live on KEXP. Thanks. All right. So for this one, Lauren's going to play guitar. All right. All right. October. It felt like 
I'm going to switch. Uh, over here. Frankie Cosmos live in the KEXP studios. We're streaming live video today on KEXP's Facebook page. They're all swapping instruments. They're going to be playing tonight at Numos. Tomorrow night down in Olympia at the Capitol Theater. Fun that you're hanging out here in the Pacific Northwest for a while. They'll be at the Wonder Ballroom in Portland on Friday. All right, we're ready. <laughs> Wait, will you just start? Okay. Me and Jesse stayed up till two. We talked about things, about dreams, about you. It felt like anything could be real or fake. Like your love is my world, but so is my heartache. And I knew if I thought really hard about flying, I could probably do it. I'm just too tired for trying. Sounds so great. Frankie Cosmo is live on KEXP, a new album out on Sub Pop Records. It's called Vessel, and it's great from beginning to end. 18 songs on there. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you all so much. It's so wonderful to see you today and tonight. Frankie Cosmo is playing at Numos. Until next time. See ya. Thank you. <laughs> You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.